Hello, and welcome to a general session on video editing. Today we're talking about matte work. And by that I mean when you take footage and you try to isolate the subject from the background. Uh, a common use case here would be uh, being able to take that subject and then put them in front of a completely different background to make it appear like that subject was actually in a totally different place. Green screen is probably the first thing that people think about with this sort of thing. Generally speaking, there are a few requirements. Uh, first one being that you have to have good lighting. So for example, with green screen, you definitely wouldn't want to have very strong lighting uh, facing directly at your subject, which would then create a shadow on the background because that would just make things more difficult when you have to try to remove the background. I am aware of three different ways of doing this kind of work inside of Blender, and we are going to go through them now. Uh, but just to talk about it, I will go through in detail how you actually do it from start to finish in future videos. So let's get to it. Okay, so first up is chroma keying or green screening. That's when you have your subject uh, standing or sitting in front of a wall or screen that is a solid color, which is typically green or blue. And the idea here is that you would then use software to target a specific color, the background color, and get rid of it. So leaving behind just the subject. Things can get tricky if your subject does have some color that is similar to the background color, uh, but there are ways to kind of get around that. Next up, we have a method that distinguishes subject from background based off of brightness. If a region appears bright, then it is considered subject material and the rest is discarded. I have had some limited success using this method for talking head footage, similar to what I'm recording right now. I still need to do some more research and testing, but right now things that I think may make a difference uh, include uh, lighting as expected, uh, maybe uh, the distance to the background, uh, and possibly the kind of clothing that you're wearing, uh, the kind and color. The end result is something similar to online meeting apps like WebEx and Teams that can apply some kind of background replacement or blurring. I think though that they probably use something more along the lines of facial recognition instead of going this route. The third approach we will cover requires a fixed camera and a static background. Uh, within your footage, you select a frame that has just the background, no subject. And then you apply a workflow that compares this reference image to all of the other frames in your footage. Anything that is different is kept and the rest is removed. Uh, like green screen, it helps a lot if your subject does not have any color, which is similar to the background. And I think my face kind of counts against this background here. All right, that's it for today's session. Uh, I hope that gave you a good idea about the things that we will be covering in future sessions here on this channel. Um, next up is going to be how to do the static background replacement. It's gonna be pretty cool because uh, we're going to make use of that same ant footage that I've been using so far with our uh, compositor tutorials. And you'll see uh, what you can do with this sort of technique instead of trying to create a mask and animate that mask. Uh, you'll see that this technique works fairly well and is a lot easier once you know how to do it. So stay tuned for that. Bye for now. The third approach we will cover requires a fixed camera and a static background. No, I don't know. The third approach we will cover require. The third approach we will cover requires a fixed camera. Uh, but there are ways to kind of get around that.